Morning boys and girls, Miss Lacey here. Welcome to week two of November. This month we've been talking about contentment. Contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. So I hope you enjoy today's lesson and have a great week. Bye-bye. but the weather isn't cooperating. But that's okay, because I can ride this bike inside. Ooh, see that? I am showing contentment. Contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. So I'm okay with this stationary bike. You know, they've made all kinds of advancements with stationary bikes. <gasps> I want one of those bikes that has all those different settings where you can make it feel like you're going like uphill or downhill. Wee! <laughs> no, you know what I really want? I want one that has a TV screen in the front so it looks like you're riding a bike through mountains or, 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 or next to the ocean. Maybe I can use my laptop. <sighs> Paris, France. C'est magnifique! Mm. Ooh! I want a bike that comes with a built-in trainer! Someone to like, pump me up while I ride! Come on, Erica! You can do it! That bike won't pedal itself! Yeah! Move! I can do it! Move! Yeah, let me some more! Too bad all I got is this old thing. All it does is pedal. In today's story, we'll hear about a king who always wanted more and more and more! 
kind of feel like him right now. It's not fun. <sighs> what are you slowing down for? You've got to keep moving if you're going to make it yes. all the way to Paris. You want to see the Eiffel Tower, oh. don't you? We. Oui. I can hear okay. you. Move, move. I will. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 21. After David and Solomon, many kings ruled the lands of Judah and Israel. Some of them listened to God, but most did not. King Ahab was worse than any other king of Israel before him. He only thought of himself and did exactly as he wanted to do. Do exactly as I want. Yes, your highness. What do you want? Hmm, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and one... Oh, it escapes me. Ah, just bring me some pears flambe. No one ever said no to King Ahab. Not even his wife, Queen Jezebel. Am I the most fabulous king to ever rule this land? Yes, of course, because you have me. <laughs> King Ahab was certain he had everything he could ever want. That is, until he took a drive into the neighboring town of Jezreel. Ooh, just look at that lovely vineyard. It is perfection. Stop at once. King Ahab examined the green leafy vines and the heavy bunches of grapes. What fantastic fruit. The soil must be excellent. You, over there. Who? Me? Who, me, your majesty? Uh, who, me, your majesty? Of course, you. Do you own this fine vineyard? I do, your majesty. Excellent. You must sell it to me at once and I shall turn it into a vegetable garden. No. Excuse me? Your majesty? I'll pay good money. I'll trade you a better vineyard. I said no. Your Majesty, may the Lord keep me from giving you the land my family handed down to me. You... what? No... <laughs> King Ahab was enraged. When he returned to the palace, he threw himself down on his bed and refused to eat anything, even date cakes dipped in honey. Why are you in such a bad mood? Why won't you eat anything? Neighbors won't give me his vineyard. Oh, snap out of it. You're the king. I'll get you that vineyard. Queen Jezebel was just as bad as her husband. Or maybe worse. She wrote a letter to the leaders of Naboth's town. Here is your mission, which you must accept. Number one, announce a special day and give Naboth an important seat. Two, have two bad guys sit across from Naboth and claim that he cursed God and the king. Three, drag Naboth out of the city and throw stones at him until he dies. That should clear. Queen Jezebel sent her message, and the leaders of Naboth's town followed it to the letter. Tell the queen, mission accomplished. Queen Jezebel was delighted by this terrible news and immediately went to find King Ahab. Oh, woe is me. Naboth won't give me. Get up! Take over Naboth's vineyard. He's dead. What? <laughs> mine! All mine! King Ahab ordered his chariot and set off at once for Jezreel. <laughs> we'll rip out these annoying vines, plant peas, parsnips, potatoes. But even as Ahab garden partied, God spoke to the prophet Elijah. Go down to see Ahab. You will find him in Naboth's vineyard. Ahab has gone there to take it over. God gave Elijah a special message for the king. 
Elijah had faced Ahab before and knew the king would not be pleased to see him. Okay, here goes. Elijah traveled to Jezreel and found Ahab in the vineyard. Pull out that row of vines. Dig up the soil, King Ahab. The king turned. His eyes narrowed as he spied Elijah. <gasps> My enemy, you found me. The Lord says, haven't you murdered a man? Haven't you taken his property? Well, 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 no, no, not me personally. I, I, and now he doesn't need it anymore. <laughs> so you've done what is evil in the sight of the Lord. The Lord says, I am going to bring horrible trouble on you. You have caused Israel to sin. Oh. For once, Ahab listened to a message from God. He tore his clothes, a sign of great sorrow for what he had done. He put on the clothing people wore to show sadness. No food. Not even date cakes dipped in honey. Not even date cakes dipped in honey. King Ahab and Jezebel had made themselves miserable, taking more and more. And in the end, both of them paid for it. Yeesh! King Ahab really wanted Naboth's vineyard. It's okay to want things, but Ahab wanted it so badly that it made him miserable. He even refused to eat. Has it ever happened to you? Have you ever wanted something so badly that it was all you could think about? Maybe it made you like super sad when you couldn't get it. Or maybe you threw a tantrum. If that sounds like something you might do, you may need a little help with contentment. Wanting things is fine. It gives you something to work toward or to look forward to. But when, when you, you want, want more and, and more and more and more, and more, and more, it can make you feel like Ahab, miserable. Jesus once said, watch out. Be on guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Jesus knew there is so much more to life than the stuff we have. There are memories to be made, adventures to be experienced. Ooh, there are relationships to be grown with God and with others. These are things that will last long after the stuff we wanted has broken or <laughs> gone out of style. So it's okay to want things, but here's the one thing to remember. Wanting more and more can make you miserable. So maybe one day I'll get a stationary bike with a few bells and whistles, but in the meantime, I'll ride this one and imagine it's springtime in Paris. My imagination is very vivid. Au revoir!